Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcap's guide on the best video and graphic settings for Valorant to give you a competitive edge on the opponent. By the end of this guide, you'll have Valorant set up perfectly to give you the fastest reaction times possible, the best aiming, and highest clarity to spot opponents. And these settings aren't just one person's opinion. We've spent countless hours researching the best pro player settings and consulted with the top players in the game to make sure the information you're about to receive is the most up-to-date and as accurate as possible. Trust me, I promise you there are some hidden settings you've never even heard of before that will give you a competitive edge. Now, we here at Skillcap release premium content daily with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. So if you want to improve at Valorant and take your game to the next level, then make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video to get more premium guides just like this one. Alright, enough hype, let's jump straight into it. Now, if there's only one thing you can take away from this guide, then it has to be that in first-person shooter games like Valorant, FPS is king. FPS stands for frames per second, and you can think of it as how frequently you're being updated with information in the game. For example, let's say a player is turning a corner to peek you. If you only had 30 FPS, the player would not only appear on your screen later, but they would also appear in a more jarring manner, sort of like in flashes. Compare this to having 300 FPS. The enemy peeking the corner will not only appear much earlier, but once you do see them, they will swing in a much smoother motion, letting you aim and track them closer to real time instead of trying to hit flashing images of them. There is simply no way around it, a higher FPS really does give you an advantage in Valorant as it lets you see opponents sooner and track their movements better in real time, making aiming easier. For these reasons, the goal is to adjust your settings to get the maximum amount of FPS possible. So to start, let's go into settings, simply hit escape and click settings while in the lobby, or join the practice mode or a custom game and hit escape. In this section, we're focusing on video settings, so go to the video tab, but don't worry, we'll be covering other important settings not a lot of players know about later on. So let's start with the general section. The first option you have is to change the resolution. So for most players, you just want to go with the native resolution of the monitor that you have. Mine is 1920 by 1080 at a 169 aspect ratio. This is pretty much standard and what the majority of you will have. However, some players that are coming from Counter-Strike may be familiar with the concept of lowering your aspect ratio and downscaling your resolution on purpose. In the game Counter-Strike, this has the effect of decreasing your field of view and stretching out your vision. This can make enemy models appear larger, and for some players, it makes them feel like the enemies are easier to hit. Well, in Valorant, this trick does not work. This is because Valorant will always be locked into a field of view of 103, regardless of your resolution or aspect ratio. So for the most part, you don't want to lower your resolution or aspect ratio as it won't give you the same zoomed in stretched advantage that you may be used to in Counter-Strike. One other piece of text you'll notice when I'm selecting my resolution is the 240Hz in brackets. This represents your monitor's refresh rate. Your monitor's refresh rate is very important and operates very similarly to your FPS. The refresh rate of your monitor represents the amount of times your monitor will update with new images every single second. For example, let's say you had 300 FPS in game, but only had a 60 Hz refresh rate on your monitor. Well, then your monitor can only update and show you 60 frames per second of those 300 frames your computer is processing. Basically, a low refresh rate on your monitor can actually bottleneck your reaction time even though you have a high FPS in game. This is why you want both the highest FPS possible while also having the highest refresh rate possible. Currently, when it comes to competitive gaming monitors, 144Hz is the standard, with 240Hz being the new top end. We highly recommend that you at least have a 144Hz monitor if you want to take your gaming to the next level, just make sure you have the FPS to back it up, as having a 144Hz refresh rate doesn't mean anything if you're only getting 60 frames per second in-game. Additionally, a lot of players will actually have a high refresh rate monitor, but make the super common mistake of not enabling it. It's really easy to check this. Simply right click on your desktop, go to display settings, then scroll down and click advanced display settings. From here, it will show you your monitor's current refresh rate. To change it, select display adapter properties. Click the monitor tab on the new panel that pops up and you'll have a drop down to change your monitor's refresh rate. Put it as high as you can. If you only have the option of 60 Hz, then that's the limit of your current monitor and you'll have to get a higher refresh rate monitor if you want to go higher. In short, getting the highest FPS in game is important for increased reaction times and aiming ability. However, so is your monitor's refresh rate as this can bottleneck how many frames you're actually able to see from your FPS. 
All right, moving on, we have the next setting, the display mode option, which should always be set to full screen. I know, I know, it's super annoying since every time you Alt-Tab, it minimizes the window, but full screen will give you a big FPS boost since your computer's processing power will only be focused on the game. It will also reduce your monitor's input lag. Input lag is a term used to describe the time it takes an event on the game's server to appear on your monitor. You always want your input lag to be as low as possible so you have the fastest reactions possible. So make sure you have this set to full screen, not windowed full screen or windowed. Below that, you have a bunch of limit FPS options. These should be turned to off as you don't want to limit your FPS and instead, as you know by now, want it as high as possible. Next, we have the graphics quality tab. An easy rule of thumb would be to just set everything as low as possible to get the highest frame rate possible. However, there are some important settings in this section to be aware of that are unique to Valorant. First is multi-threaded rendering, which you always want to be turned on as this is the key to getting the maximum FPS possible out of your computer. Then you have material, texture, detail, and UI quality. You want all of these set to low as there is no competitive benefit to increasing them and it will only lower your FPS. Sure, if you're getting a ton of FPS and the low settings are too ugly for you, then you can bump it up to medium, but pretty much every single pro has this set to low to get the highest frame rate possible and reduce visual clutter. Next is Vignette, which is honestly one of the worst settings to have enabled. It creates a dark border on the edge of your screen, which will give you less spatial awareness while also lowering your FPS. After this, we have VSync, which you should always have turned off. What VSync does is match your FPS to your monitor's refresh rate and is used to help prevent something called screen tearing. You think this would be an overall benefit, but VSync is notorious for increasing input lag, worsening your reaction times, so always have this off. Next, we have anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing will reduce the jagged edged look of corners and outlines of enemies by creating a kind of blur or softness effect around the edges of objects. You want this to be turned off to, again, maximize your frames per second. Anisotropic filtering, on the other hand, really just increases ground and texture detail at a distance. This, you definitely want to set to the lowest setting as more detail will not only take a huge hit to your FPS, but also just create more distractions on the screen. Next, we have the Improve Clarity setting, which is actually one of the only settings we recommend that you enable. This increases the contrast in midtones, which serves to give you a clearer picture. In essence, instead of things having a washed out brightness, it creates minor shadows or darkness in areas to give contrast. Now, this setting will tax your FPS, so if you're on a lower end machine, you may want to disable this, but if you're on a medium to high end machine, definitely enable this as it will help enemies stand out more. And finally, the last three settings are probably the worst to have enabled, Bloom, Distortion, and First Person Shadows. Bloom will give a sort of bright glow to things, which makes objects harder to track as they become washed out in brightness while also lowering your frame rate, so make sure to turn it off. Distortion will distort things behind orbs, explosions, and some agent abilities. This will make it difficult to spot enemies while lowering your frame rate, so make sure to turn it off. And lastly, we have first person shadows. Now, I know some of you may be thinking that having shadows on could give you a competitive advantage by seeing an enemy's shadow revealing them hiding behind a corner without actually seeing them. However, first person shadows does not impact enemy shadows. It only impacts first person shadows on your own weapons and arms. Take a look at the hands in these two pictures and you'll see it just creates some extra shadows to distract you and have your computer process. So turning this off will not only increase your frame rate, but also reduce the clutter on your screen. Moving on, we have the Stats tab. Here you can turn on stats that will appear in the top left corner of your screen while you play. These are best used to diagnose problems and establish benchmarks for your computer. For example, by enabling client FPS, we can see what our FPS is in game and whether we're running into significant FPS drops we should be concerned about. The same idea with network round trip time and packet loss. If our ping is suddenly high or jumping around and we have packet loss, that informs us that something is wrong with our internet. We recommend that you experiment turning these on to see the benchmarks of your computer, but then turning them off if you aren't having any issues, as it will only create more screen clutter and take away some FPS by having them constantly running on your screen. All right, so now your in-game settings are optimized for your video and graphics. However, there are still a few optimizations you can do outside of the game. Here are a couple tips to increase your FPS in Windows. First, go to the search bar and type settings. Then in the search bar, type performance and select adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. 
Then select adjust for best performance. This will increase your FPS and you can always manually enable certain options if you want to customize it. For example, I like the smooth edges of screen fonts. Next, go to the search bar in Windows and type game mode and click game mode settings. Make sure that you have this turned off, especially if you are streaming or recording as it can create all sorts of issues. For some super low end PCs, having this turned on may help increase your FPS, but in the vast majority of cases, this just causes all sorts of compatibility problems. Then in the side menu, click captures and turn this off. And then in the side menu, click game bar and make sure that is turned off as well. Again, this will increase your FPS with absolutely no downside. Next, go to Windows search bar and type battery and click power and sleep settings. Then click additional power settings. Make sure you have high performance selected to get maximum frames. Something else you want to do is right click on your taskbar and open task manager. Then go to the startup tab. Here you can disable applications from automatically starting up when your computer runs. The reason why this is useful is that a lot of people have applications start up when their computer turns on, then they end up running in the background the whole time they're playing without them even knowing, lowering their frame rate and taxing their computer. Something else you should do is check applications that you are purposely running in the background and have something called hardware acceleration turned off. For example, if you open Discord and go to settings, then appearance, and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a hardware acceleration option. Make sure this is turned off, otherwise it will be taxing your GPU and lowering your frame rate in games. And if this guide is something you want to see more of, then you're in luck as we have more guides on the way just like this one. The best pro crosshair settings, finding the best mouse sensitivity, and so much more. So make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video to keep up to date with the best Valorant guides you simply won't find anywhere else. Alright, moving on, there are even more video and graphic settings you can use to get an edge on the opponent. Let's head into the general tab in the settings menu to see what they are. First is one of the most underutilized settings and that's enemy highlight color. By default, this will be set to red, but many players find that red blends in a bit too much with the rest of the game. For this reason, a lot of pros are switching to either purple or yellow. The majority of pros have selected purple, but I personally find it a bit too difficult to see. Other pros such as tens have it set to yellow, which I also personally find helps enemies stand out a bit more. However, this all comes down to personal preference. The point is, experiment with different colors and choose one which you find helps enemies stand out the most. And speaking of helping enemies stand out more, a lot of Counter-Strike veterans have been using a little trick to help spot enemies and get kills that a lot of you guys probably don't know about, and that's increasing something called your digital vibrance. Increasing your digital vibrance will make colors richer, brighter, and cleaner, and for most people will make enemies stand out more. The way to increase your digital vibrance depends on if you have an NVIDIA or AMD graphics card, but both are very similar. For NVIDIA users, simply right click the desktop, select NVIDIA control panel, and then select adjust desktop color settings on the side. From here, you'll notice a digital vibrance setting, which is default set to 50%. You want to increase this to 100% or however high works best for you. For AMD users, you right click on the desktop, then AMD Radeon software, then in the search bar at the top, type display and click display settings. Then scroll down and you'll see a saturation bar. Again, increase this to 200 or however high that you feel helps you spot enemies easier. Digital vibrance is one of those secret tricks a lot of veterans and pros have been using for a long time now to help spot enemies in FPS games, so definitely put it to use. All right, moving on, we have the best minimap settings, which are way more important than people realize as the best players are constantly checking it to spot out where enemies are and know when to rotate or where to head on the map. Surprisingly, minimap settings are pretty universal among pro players. Firstly, they always have it set to rotate, not fixed. When you have it set to fixed, the minimap won't move at all. This can actually be useful for newer players who haven't learned the maps yet since they can better understand where they are at a glance. However, for more experienced players, setting it to rotate is often superior. For example, let's say you hear shots to your right, you can then intuitively check the minimap and know to look to the right of your agent icon and that's where they are on the map. Next, you have keep player centered, which you want to set it to off. The problem is, if you have this on, that it won't show the entire minimap, only a portion of the map around your character. This means if there are fights on the other side of the map, you won't be able to see how many enemies there are or what's happening. So you definitely want to set this to off so that you can always see the entire minimap. And that leads us into minimap size. This isn't too important, but for newer players, you definitely want to increase the size larger so it's easier for you to see. Having it set to one is a good rule of thumb and then can increase or decrease from there based on your preference. 
Minimap zoom, on the other hand, is much more important, as if you increase this to maximum, it will actually cut off parts of the minimap, blinding you to those areas. That's why we recommend not putting this higher than 0.9 to prevent this from happening. And lastly, for minimap settings, we have the vision cones, which you should definitely have turned on. This is super helpful, as it will show you on the minimap the parts of the map your teammates are looking at. This can then inform you of gaps in vision enemies can sneak through, or whether your teammate is actually peeking and holding an angle, or just simply hiding. Moving on, we have the other section. The first setting is show map region names, which you should have set to always. This way, when you bring up the map by hitting caps lock or the M key, you will see all the callout names. It also shows the callout name of the area you're currently located in below the minimap. After this, you have cycle to next slash previous weapon reps inventory. It doesn't matter what you set this to, since you should never be cycling your weapons using your mouse wheel, and instead be pulling weapons you want out with 1, 2, and 3 keys on your keyboard. Next, you have show mature content, which you want enabled, this way you can access the show corpses and show blood settings. For show corpses, a lot of pros actually have this set to off. By setting it to off, it replaces corpses on the ground with a holographic icon of them. This will have a few benefits, the first being that it gives you a slight boost to your frame rate. The second being that it can help you immediately identify not only where someone has died, but which agent it was. This is super useful on an agent like Sage, as when using her ultimate, you often want to resurrect a specific player, and this helps identify who's who. There is one downside though, and that's the hologram can sometimes get in the way when you're aiming if an enemy died recently in a narrow choke point. For that reason, this setting somewhat comes down to player preference, but we recommend at least try and show corpses to off, as if you don't run into it blocking your aim, it's just simply objectively better. Moving on, we have show blood. You want this turned on, as it will give you a better indication of when you land a headshot as a ton of blood sprays out. Compare this to when it's turned off, only sparks fly out, which can make it hard to identify a headshot to a shoulder shot. The other benefit is that blood will actually go through some thin walls in the game, helping you identify when you wall bang opponents. Moving on, explicit language filter doesn't really matter, but if you're someone who gets tilted easily by trash talk, you probably want it turned on. Instability indicators should be turned on, as this will make it so that a small icon will appear in the corner of your screen if you're having packet loss or connection issues with the server. Now, for network buffering, you always want this set to minimum. This is because increasing it will cause input delay, lowering your reaction speed. This is meant to be used only for players who are having really bad connection issues to the point that things are jittering on their screen, as it helps smooth things out, but at the cost of delays on movement and input. Next, we have show bullet tracers, and you have to have this turned on. This will help make it easier to control your own spray, since you can see the tracers of your bullets and how you're missing, and can make adjustments based off of that. Additionally, it lets you see the enemy's bullet tracers, so when they shoot through smoke, you'll be able to see where they're shooting from and kill them. And lastly, we have show spectator count. This is something that appears on the top right corner of your screen when you're alive and your teammates are dead to show you how many of your teammates are watching you. If you're someone who gets anxious or performs worse knowing players are watching, then you will want to turn this off. Alright, we here at Skillcap put a ton of work into this guide making sure to provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information you won't find anywhere else. However, none of that would matter without you guys, so we'd love to hear what topic you'd like us to do a guide on next in the comments section below. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video to get more premium guides just like this one with one goal in mind helping you become a better player. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and good luck, good half, and good game.